oscillation tool, hit, hold my shift key, click, and pull it up into the air. I'm now going to go into my drop down menu and select the full slope and have it facing towards uh, the 90 degree angle of it like this needs to be basically facing towards the uh, east. So I take my selection right here with that tool and I'm going to drag it over top of my, my little selection. Hold my shift key, click, and we'll pull it off towards me. And once I get it over here, I'm going to hit my checkbox. And if you notice, the size of what I have in, on the end of my pointer here, it's still the same size. It's teeny tiny. So I'm going to put this in a straight line, like so. And now I have this bar. Now, if I take my paint tool here, and let's go and let me change this so you can actually see it. I'll take it to obsidian and polished obsidian. And I'm going to paint this bar so you can see it a little better. So there we go. We now have this thin bar. And if I take my selection tool and I select that, you can see it's half size this way. Now, there are several things you can do with this. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a control copy. And then I'm going to do a control paste. And I'm going to bring this thing up into the air and use my tilde key to rotate it onto its side. And I'm going to click. Let me zoom in here a little bit so you can see this. Use my tilde key so I can maneuver it tab to kind of move it around here and I'm going to basically take this and I'm going to put one of these on each side and paste them in a row so now I have basically this this and this and if I select the center one here Control copy and I come over to my wall and I do a control paste control V and bring this over by my wall you can see it created a indentation right here alright now the next thing I'm going to do is instead of grabbing that one I'm going to go and select this outside one here on this outside like this hit control copy and I'm going to do a control V to paste to where I can see it here and I'm going to paste it on it if you notice it didn't make any changes to the wall itself now let's go back to the same selection but I'm going to select the opposite end which is this one over here control copy I'm gonna do a control V to paste and bring this out like this I think I instead of control Z to back up I think I didn't do it quite enough Or that or oh I remember once you get it up against it like this you need to do a V to rotate it around that's where I was messing up and if I click now you can see it now pulls it out so you have actually three things that it can do either a it actually stays like this and pushes in stays the same or pulls out so you have three different options that it can actually do and that is the first thing that you can do with these particular type of voxels the next thing we can do is let's go back over to this original and if I take this and I copy and then I paste it and I bring this up into the air hit shift and I click and I click OK 
The next thing I want to do is let me zoom in here. I'm going to take my add tool and let's go back to our standard square and zoom down. I'm going to put this right up against the outside, hold my shift key, click, drag it out by one voxel, hit my checkbox. Now, I want to take my selection tool and select this half voxel, take my smooth tool, and click on it. If you notice, it just basically vanished with one click of my, my smooth tool. Go back to my selection tool, grab this, and pull it out. So you're actually selecting that other voxel that we put here. Do a control copy. Now let's go over to our wall here, and I'm going to do a control V to paste. Let's bring that one voxel that we can see out to the second voxel away from the wall, just like an etching. Uh, the voxel etching and with the paste error checked in hit check now the one cool thing about this thing and depending on how you have your rotation what tool you use uh, to create this particular type voxel you can actually make different effects using etching in the same fashion as the standard etching but this one actually does goes one step further than what a standard etcher does if I put, make my bar here and I select this whole section and I delete it you'll actually see this particular etcher it has a flat shape here and it has a bevel on the bottom side so it actually has a different type of etching going on here Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more. You can actually see where it literally has a bevel on this side and there's actually a bevel on the other side as well. But the very top face here is still a standard voxel. The, you can still fill this in using uh, putty voxels, um, which you'll have to look through my channel to actually find the, the putty voxels, but you can fill the space with putty voxels just like you can um, other etching um, types. The other cool thing about the way this thing reacts is if I take my add tool and I come in here and I sit her right here, make sure it's right in that center section and I click OK, I create another type of design pattern here because it actually stretches with a standard voxel. So we can actually create eyeballs and stuff like that in our walls. So the next thing that um, he actually kind of played around with was, and, and, and basically the, the etching portion was a mixture between uh, Zacrilli here and myself. Um, everything else that I showed you before the etching is all Zacrilli. So all the props kind of goes to him. But the other thing that he showed me was this right here. If we drop down, we'll come out into the water and kind of get away from everything. We'll hit evac to safety and come down into our water like so. If I come under here and this is a basically a huge putty voxel that he has created. If you're underneath the water, take your selection tool and using the, the actual putty technique um, that was outlined in another video, take a selection, drag it out like so. It doesn't have to be very big. You can actually make it pretty much any size you want. But uh, take a selection that's underneath water like this and basically we'll use this this obsidian here and we'll take our paint tool and paint it and for some reason it does not like me today but let's see here let me go with another pattern and see if that does it 
All right, so basically it's not working for me here, but all these are out here are putty voxels. So with this putty voxels, he took his delete tool. So if we go into delete tool here and let's change the shape of it to the full slope here. And I click and I move this around so you can actually see it here. I take my delete tool and we'll kind of create something over here. I'll drop this down in there so we can delete out a section. Let me check. And this one huge putty voxel that he, he has here, now I have this sharp little edge. If I take my selection tool and I grab that selection, do a control copy just to grab that one deformed um, voxel that we've made here inside of this puddle voxy, uh, putty voxel, we do a control C to copy it, that one voxel. Now let's go back up and get inside and we're going to come up against this wall. Now this right here, I'll kind of show you the side view. This is just, all right, let's go ahead and clear this out. Boom. So now we have a clean slate. It's all flat. I'm going to take my paintbrush take this whatever gem it is <laughs> and I take this selection and I grab this area here and I paint it like so now if I come up against it and look this way you can see it still looks flat there's there's nothing there you know like this so what I'm gonna do is I still have that putty voxel that's been manipulated still on, on the clipboard. So let's do a control V to paste. Now, if you can tell, there's no arrows. There's no nothing here. I, I can't see where this voxel resides. But if I come up against this wall and I start clicking, and start just clicking around, clicking around, I come up against the wall, Okay, now it doesn't want to agree with me. So let's do a tilty. And I'm going to do one small rotation to see if I can get it on the right corner. Let me hit tilty again to go back to normal. There we go. You see that? The gems are starting to pop out on the on the wall. So I do still have that putty voxel that is invisible. You look at this. Look at the, the raised surface now that's on these gems. They look real now. And you can actually come in here and just start clicking away and, and making these gems literally pop out from the wall. Like so. And that is one way to start doing some manipulation and playing around with textures on your walls. And I can do the same thing with rocks. I can bring, you know, bring up some of those those um, raised surfaces on these walls to do some really cool effects. Like so. And now that, that rock face literally has a texture to it. And pretty much everything that I just went over is all on Zacrilli. Now the initial uh, etching that we showed you um, the person that came up with that was sock and um, this technique actually with the rounded faces that are coming in is Zacrilli and a little help from good old Tema so uh, a bunch of new stuff all in this one video so pick it apart watch it again and maybe you'll pick up something out of